Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I'd like to take you through all of the um, terminal tackle, end tackle that you'll need to start carp fishing. So if you're just getting into carp fishing you might find it a little bit daunting with all the different products on the market. But I'm going to try to um, just uh, narrow it down to pretty much the basics, things that I think you need and you can maybe do without. So I'm going to take you through my tackle box now and show you what I use for carp fishing. So the first thing that I want to talk about is a catapult, a nice big catapult with a nice big pouch in the end of it with a nice long elastic, so not your match fishing type catapult for maggots, um, something to catapult large amounts of bait out. So if you're fishing at quite a distance, you can just easily pull back on your large catapult and get the bait out and I'd also recommend doing some practice with it because it's not as easy as it looks to uh, to catapult bait out accurately. Um, it, it might be easy for some people who have done it for a long time, but um, there's nothing wrong with just having a practice with it as well, just to get used to it. So a nice big strong catapult, you can catapult boilies out and ground bait, and things like that, to uh, your hook bait. So the next important thing that you'll need to take is a selection of hooks. So I have some um, oid hooks here of different sizes to take so that I can tie them on the bank. And I have some more here with longer shanks depending on the bait that I'm using. But um, it's good to have a variety of just um, loose hooks so that you can make up a rig when required. I also have some hooks to nylon. So there's some size eight um, hooks to nylon here that I can use for smaller carp. And there's some more here. And then I have some hooks that have um, a little piece of metal attached to them for boilies or pellets. And you can push the little bit of metal into the bait. It's kind of like a hair rig pre-done and again here some hooks to push the metal insert into the bait I don't use these too often but they are good to have at hand for variety and then I also have um, a knot tester so when I've tied my hook I can pull on the knot with this and get two fingers on it just to make sure that your knot is tight because you do not want to catch a large carp and then the the uh, the knot fail you know you want to make sure your knots are good so a selection of hooks I only use barbless hooks um, I might on occasion use a micro barb but I usually stick to a barbless hook and a barbless hook is a hook with no barb in it there's lots of debates on what's better for carp barbed barbless but um, I personally like to use a barbless hook And for the sizes, I go from about, the biggest I tend to use is probably a size 10 hook, something like that. And the smallest, if I'm fishing for small carp, is about a size 14. So um, another essential thing that I would say you need for carp fishing is um, a rig wallet. So you can make rigs at home Sometimes when you're on the bank and your hands are cold, you might not want to make a rig or you might just not want to waste the time sitting there making a rig. You might want to have it all planned out. And I just find that having a rig wallet so that you can just get on the bank and set your rig up without too much nonsense is, um, is always useful. So you can buy them in the shop pre-done. Here is um, a hair rig. It's got the swivel at the end and then it goes down to um, the hook and the hook... Um, the hair rig and everything is on there. So you can just hook that onto um, your main line and you're good to go. So these rig wallets are quite cheap. I've had this one for years. And you can see um, I've got all my rigs over the years in here stored. You can see all the different, different lengths, different types. So I can just pick one out. This one's even got a boilie still on it. Um, I could just pick one out, all different lengths, different hook sizes, depending on what I'm doing. 
and I can get fishing straight away. Some of these were bought from a shop, some of them I made myself. Um, and the rig wallet, it's got like um, some metal at the end that you can hook the hook onto and then you pin it into the uh, foam board with these little pins. And then there's a, there's a pre-made rig ready to go. And then when you're done, you can just hook them back in and pin them back in place. Really useful to have. So some more essential things that I take, I take some line and um, I usually take about eight pound line for tying um, hair rigs and hook links. So that's always there if I need it. I have a disgorger, um, a large disgorger if I need to get a hook out of a carp that's gone in a bit deeper and I can't do it with my fingers, but usually you can get them out with your fingers when you're carp fishing it's not usually a problem, but it's always good to have a disgorger at hand. I also have a pellet bander. Not strictly essential, but they're really good to have. They're very cheap, and you can add a band onto a pellet with these to fish um, with a pellet on a band on the end of your hook. Um, I have a little video on how to use these, and I'll leave a link in the description box below to that video if you're interested. I also have a pair of scissors and these scissors can cut line and braid. So these are specifically designed for fishing. You can see here they have these little holes where you can put shot in there and squeeze it onto the line. And you can squeeze shot on at the end here with the flat part. Uh, they're really good. I've had these since I was a kid. Really good for cutting braid and thick line. So a standard pair of scissors will do. But if you can get a pair of these type of scissors, even better. I also take um, a baiting drill. So this is basically just a little drill bit that allows you to drill a hole in a boiler or a pellet, and that will allow you to put a hair rig through. If you'd like to know how to um, tie a boiler onto a hair rig setup, I have a video on that, and I'll leave a link in the description box below to that video too. But this just allows you to drill a hole in bait without splitting the bait. And then you have um, a baiting needle. So this allows you to get the line through the hole and pull it through. There's a little thing here, a little sort of hinge. And as you pull it through, that closes down and pulls the loop through the bait. So without that, you can't really get your line through the bait and have a hair rig set up. So another very cheap and very useful bit of kit. Also, I always take a selection of shots with me, depending on what I'm doing. I might want to add a shot by the hook to keep it on the bottom. I might want to do a bit of float fishing. Who knows? It's always good to have a box of shots with you. And then I have a little selection of floats. So um, I have some smaller floats just for um, maybe I might, I might fish uh, on the bottom in the summertime with some maggots or just a general bit of carp fishing, some sweet corn. And that usually does the trick, a float like that. And then um, if you want to do a bit of pellet waggler fishing out far into the lake, catapulting pellets, um, you might want to use a bit of a heavier duty float such as this. So moving on to um, weights and feeders. So I have a selection here of inline weights. So these are good for using um, a, with a running rig. So these weights have holes through the middle and you can put line through here and that allows the weight to run freely on the bottom for a running rig. I have a video on how to um, set up a running rig and I'll leave a dis uh, link in the description below to that video if you're interested. Here's another type of weight, which is an inline weight again and that will run freely. So they're the inline weights, and then I have the sort of bolt rig type weights. I have a video on how to set up a bolt rig. Again, uh, link in description for that video. Um, I have a selection of weights, so small ones like this, going up to larger ones. Traditional style ones and more modern ones. Doesn't really matter too much. Um, just have a go at all the different types and see what you like. 
Some of them are designed for specific things like sitting on the bottom and looking invisible. And then for these types of um, weights, I use a lead clip and this is for safety. So this allows for if the fish gets caught in some weed, this piece of rubber pulls away and the lead falls off. So that allows the fish to get away without having a weight attached to its mouth. So two main types of weights, inline weights that run freely through the line. So you can imagine if you do snag a fish and it can't get out, if the line breaks, the line will just come free because it's going through the middle of the weight. These ones, it's attached on with um, shots or a line clip or whatever. So you need to add the, um, the lead clip on here just for safety. And then I also take a plummet to check the depth if I'm doing a bit of float fishing. And sometimes I might wanna just check the depth anyway. And then you've got um, a line clip. And this, if it's very windy or you're fishing closer in, this you put this on your line after you've cast, um, just after your rod tip and it will pull down and it will pull all the line down onto the bottom so that fish in the area don't accidentally bump into your line and, and it spooks them off. So uh, these are quite useful as well and then when you reel in you can remove these from the line. These just hang on the line. I also have a selection of um, feeders, method feeders which sit flat on the bottom and you crush ground bait onto these. You can get little moulds that you buy where you put the ground bait in and it sort of does it for you, but I've never used those. I just squeeze it around myself. Here's another inline one. Uh, I've got a few different sizes of those. These are really good for uh, catching carp in the summer. So I would say these are also essential for carp fishing. So I also have a selection of um, bits and bobs such as swivels. So I really do think that swivels are essential in carp fishing and I'll tell you why. When you fish for carp, um, number one, for your made up rigs, you can add and take away a rig to um, a swivel. But um, for me, more importantly, what the swivel allows is for the line, because the, the line is attached at both ends. It allows the line to twist freely without it tangling. So I've fished with a float before and, and even with ledgers. And if you're playing a fish at a long distance, as it takes the line, the, the float or the weight, if it's not on a swivel, will, like a helicopter, like, like a propeller, it will twist in the water and it will keep spinning and it will tangle up your line. And then the line is useless and you have to pull it off your reel and start again. So the swivel allows that line to move without it getting damaged. It's similar with uh, if you're fishing for eels. When I was a kid, I used to fish for eels and the, the, the line was always tangled up because eels twist around in the water. So definitely get some swivels. I have a selection of different types here. Um, so useful. And once you've got them, they last practically forever. And then here I have a selection of um, lead clips, what I was saying earlier about um, safety for carp. It allows the, um, the, the the weight to fall off the rig if the carp gets tangled in some weed. And then I've got some um, some little plastic stops here for boilies, boilie stops and bait stops. So you put these through the loop and it stops the boilie falling off the line. And then I have some like fake baits. I haven't had much success with fake baits. Um, bits of corn. So not really essential, but they're in there. And then there's just some beads here, some rubber beads to protect your knots. So when you're tying um, knots for carp fishing, it's always good to have a rubber bead just to protect the line. Pull that over the knot, um, and it'll protect it. And some ledger stops. So other things that I also have, um, these aren't as essential, but they're good to have because they're cheap. So I've got like a selection of um, pellet bands if I want to fish with a pellet band so that it's like a hair rig setup. The pellet is not on the hook. 
so I don't have to soften it and I can add it to the band. So I have different types of bands there. And I also have bait screws. So these screws have a little ring on the end to attach them onto a, the loop of the hair rig and then you can screw them into the, the boiler. So it, it's, it's so that you don't need to drill the boiler and add a stop, you can use a bait screw. I don't think I really use these, but I thought it was worth showing. And then I've got some little fake um, red worms. So these might be good if you're having a hard time catching. You might add one of these next to your bait just to add a little bit of interest, little rubber worms. And then I have some PVA string um, and some bait floss. And these are good for, um, say if you've got an awkward position where you're, you're boily fishing and you can't quite get it with the catapult and you want to get really close and concentrated around your, your hook bait, you can use PVA string and what you can do is you can drill a series of boilies and then pull the string through and tie it so you've got five or six boilies on a string and then you can hook that string onto your, your hook, cast it out and then the boilies will fall around your hook bait and then this PVA string will melt. So that's also um, a nice little thing to have, not essential though. So another essential little bit of kit is some kind of basic little knife, just so that you can cut up bait such as luncheon meat. Um, so when you're on the bank, if you don't have a knife, you can't really cube up luncheon meat, things like that, or you might wanna shave off some of your boilie and change the shape of it slightly. So a little pocket knife type thing is good and um, useful. So another thing to add would be um, a scale and preferably one that has adjustment on it so that you can zero the net. So when you add the weight of the net and all the water, you want to put the, uh, the scale back to zero. So this one has a little adjustment knob at the top here and you can weigh your fish to, uh, to see if you've got a new personal best. And it doesn't need to be um, specifically for fishing, it can be any scale that can uh, measure that kind of weight, so a luggage scale, any cheap scale, just so that you can get an accurate reading of the weight. It doesn't have to be a fishing, uh, marketed you know, for fishing. So it might seem obvious, but also um, I'd recommend a good strong tackle box. I've had this one for years. I think it's made by Fox. Yeah, so this one's a system Fox box. As I say, I've had it about eight years and it hasn't broken and it's been through quite a bit of abuse and um, it just, it kind of looks just like any other tackle box, but um, it's really hard wearing and strong and it doesn't crack. And if you buy a cheap tackle box um, you, with carp fishing, you're probably going to find that you're going to end up having to replace it. So, and I'd also recommend getting one with these dividing sections that you can adjust as well um, just to make sure that everything fits how you want it to but a decent tackle box I prefer one that's flat rather than one that kind of comes out when you carp fishing because you can just see everything all in one go and it, I just find it easier that way one of the things that I probably forget most often when I go carp fishing is to take an old towel an old kitchen towel um, once you catch a fish and you touch the fish you really need a towel to just wipe your hands. Um, if you have to sit there all day, it can be quite annoying to have slimy hands and you end up wiping them on the grass and in the water. Um, it's better to just rinse them in the water and get a towel just to dry them off and then you can get back setting up your rig again and you're good to go. So an old towel. So that is about it for um, all the essential end tackle or terminal tackle that you might need for carp fishing. Of course there are more products out there um, and there are more useful things that can be used too. So if there's anything I've missed out, please let me know in the comments section below. But if you did find this video useful, if you're getting into carp fishing, um, this is what I've built up over the years. I wouldn't suggest to go out and buy all this stuff right now. Just build it up as you go along. Um, to begin with, you only need a weight, a hook, some line. Um, you don't even need a catapult, you could throw the bait out by hand. Just um, some hooks, some line, and some weights, and a couple of floats, and then just build up from there. So if you did find this video useful, please remember to like, and also consider subscribing for more fishing-related videos, 
And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.